Hey guys, today I'm going to show you um, a couple of things really, how to um, transfer attributes uh, from a, an image texture onto a uh, a, a grid really uh, in geometry nodes. This isn't really texturing UV wise, but it's uh, projecting a your vertex colors from an image onto the uh, vertexes of the geometry nodes plane or a grid uh, so I will sh show you how to how to do that as well as how to have it influence the levels of um, or the height of your instances if you want to have it like that you could also just have it be um, flat so let me see if I can show you if I just mute that and mute that you could just have it be that or just flat here but you can um, I'm just going to show you how to get this uh, whole setup done and then you can decide to how to improve it from there. So let's get started. All right, before I start this video, the, this tutorial, I want to uh, say thank you to Waggish Cape who created those um, images that you saw me use as an example and that I'm going to use as an example in this tutorial. He uploaded them to our Discord, and I decided to steal it from him because I'm an asshole friend like that. I love you. Um, so let's continue on. Uh, I'll link his channel down below if you're interested. It's a cool channel. So first, let's start by adding a simple plane. Let's open up a new geometry node system. And just immediately cut that off because we are going to use a procedural grid so we have more control. I like to uh, size this up to 10 with vertices of 100 just to start. You can amp this up later on. Then we're going to instance on points so that we can instance uh, really anything that we want. But I'm going to use a cylinder set to the least amount of vertices, so 3. Put that into instances and we'll see we just get a bunch. Let's uh, scale these down to the right size so that they're not overlapping each other that much. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, that's good. Okay. After that, we're going to uh, go to Geometry, Set Position, get our Set Position node so we can uh, change the elevation here. Texture, Image Texture. Now we're going to Open. I'm going to find my uh, texture that I'm going to use. So I am going to start with um, with the this uh, this one. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, and uh, just plug it in. You'll see everything goes into chaos. We are going to switch this to clip, and when you'll see everything is now tiny. This is this is where our image really is. And you can see it's being pushed in the X, Y, and Z. We only want it to go up in Z, so we're going to get a vector, uh, combine X, Y, Z, and only put it on, on the Z channel. That way we're only moving up, up and down. From here we want to change the vector coordinates. So we're going to go vector, math, set this to scale, uh, plug that in, input position, plug that into vector and then we can control the scale it's going to uh, from here it's being controlled by uh, you could think of the the grid as um as a quadrant so like positive X negative X negative Y blah 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 all that stuff so uh, it's going to scale based on that in that case 0 0.1 it usually does the trick or 0 0.099 has also worked for me more specifically but carrying on, we now need to move this up 0.5 and to the left 0.5. So we are going to do vector math. We're going to add 0.5 into the positive direction. And we now have our scale. You can sort of see the image now. However, you see that it's uh, kind of squashed. But in order for us to get a clear view of what's going on, we need to bring in the material. So if we just switch to the material preview, we see that nothing is on. Let's add a material, go to material, set material, and select our material. 
Uh, we're just going to call this um, face, I guess. I don't know. Uh, call it whatever you want. So from here, we need to add an attribute, stored name attribute, and place it before the uh, the set material. Think of this as order of operation. It's going to store the, na the, the color, in this case, of our image into this named attribute, which I'm going to name col for color or colon, whatever you want. Um, and then it's going to apply that set into the material itself. So we want this after. Now, I'm going to go into the shader editor down here. And we're going to look for attribute. In attribute, we're going to type in the name that we want. Holding Alt-Shift if you have Node Wrangler activating, activated. Or sorry, not Alt-Shift, Control-Shift will let you preview the node with a viewer node and you can see this isn't what we want. Why? It's because this node doesn't like to work with instances. Right now this isn't geometry, this is instances. So we need to realize that instances with a realize instance node after the set position and voila! We get our image elevated by, uh, by the points, but if you remember uh, this was a mm, a vertical image, not a squared off image. So we need to do some trick math tricks here in order to get that back. So we need to bring a combined XYZ and a separate XYZ, separating the channels, and then recombining this. In this case, the Z um, channel doesn't matter that much because uh, it's a flat image that we're projecting. So it has no Z depth. Anyways, um, so we're going to just do the X and Y, bring in a math node, set it to multiply, and default it to 1, copy that over to the Y, and from here we can now adjust our um, our scale. So in this case it's a 1.25 if I remember, that looks more or less right, you can see that he's back into normal proportions. And now we have these black bars, which is from our clip. Um, if we take this alpha and run it through a delete geometry node set after the realize instance, run the alpha to the selection, we'll see we'll get only the black bars. We need to invert this, set a boolean math operation, set to not, and it'll invert the selection, allowing us to only have our image selected out. Now. I, again, if you don't now, if, if we again, if you don't want the uh, the rising things, all you really have to do is delete this node or just mute it, and you have a flat plane. You could also just change this out for anything you want. So let's say a mesh uh, icosphere, change that into the instance, and it'll change it into an icosphere if you so wish. Uh, but we're going to continue on with what we were doing here. Uh, bring that back. If we want to control more the fine detail of how much we're elevating, we can go into a utility math, place this here, set this to multiply, not mute, uh, set this to multiply, and then we could adjust the strength here. We could also adjust the fall off by setting a map range. I like to keep it on smoother step. And we adjust the fall off with our with these parameters. In this case I want a little bit of that to have that elevated up. One of my favorite things to do is if you, I hit 7 and 5 on the numpad, I could kind of like do a blow up effect of these, uh, of, these, of these points. I could also increase the depth a bit to give it a bit more of a depth look I guess and then you can sort of see the image exploding it's pretty fun. But that's the basics of it. That's really all there is to it. You can continue to add on to this. Um, you could set up a proximity or a ray cast to only affect your a certain uh, position, but the, that's um, that's going to be its own thing. So if we switch this out to another image, you'll see we just get the same thing. If we set that up to uh, that image we we already get that we could adjust it a little bit more 
to fit our needs or if we square this off this is a squared image so we need to set this back to one and it's good uh, then we adjust our parameters as we wish to deal with the levels and that's really all there is to it so I'm glad uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, and that you make many cool renders with this or whatever you need with it. Peace.